So we are about to begin. By the way, my name is Reverend Ann Jefferson. I'm the Director of Community Life and Spiritual Care here at Pacific School of Religion. So welcome once again. God bless you.
as we begin this time of sacred celebration together in physical presence and connected through virtual presence, we must acknowledge first that we are standing on holy ground. And we acknowledge that we are standing in the presence of a great cloud of witnesses who surround us with the testimony of their faithful journeys. Ashe. We acknowledge that this church and the Pacific School of Religion occupy land in Huchun, the unceded territory of the Chuchunyo speaking Ohlone people, the successors of the sovereign Verona Band of Alameda County. We acknowledge that among the great cloud of witnesses, we honor those who were the first stewards of this land, whose umbilical cords are buried in this land, whose DNA is in the soil, and we pour libations for them. We understand that we and all members of the Berkeley community continue to benefit from the seizure, occupation, and use of this land, which was and continues to be of great importance to the Muwakma. Ohlone tribe and other familiar descendants of the Verona band. And as we pour libations for those indigenous ancestors, we also take time to honor those whose lives and labor and sacrifice made it possible for us to be in this place in this time. Those who seeded into this edifice, as well as those who could not freely enter this edifice, or other such institutions of higher learning or access. We pour libations for them, Ashe. And because we are the beneficiaries of the fruits of this land and the creation care of its original stewards, we commit ourselves this day to more than words, but actions that acknowledge and embrace our responsibility to take restorative action in solidarity with indigenous communities and projects that causes me the life of this sacred ground and all its inhabitants to flourish. We affirm and recommit to breathing life into the dry bones of injustice in all that we teach, preach, and do for the sake of those who have gone before us and for the sake of the generations that are yet to come. Ashe. For the, for the sake, sake of, of the land, land for the, for the honor, honor of, of the ancestors, ancestors for, the for the life of, of our, our Mother Earth, Earth and all of her, her children, children, we, we say, say Aho, Ashe, Ashe and, and Amen. amen. From the places we have known, from journeys still unfolding, the spirit of love brings us together. Come from the war, O breath, breathe upon us, may be life. 
in the dried out valleys, in the parched places, the spirit of grace gathers us. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe among us that there may be life. To the bones that long for flesh, to the lives that long for freedom, the spirit of justice draws our attention. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe between us that there may be life. Until all flesh is loved, until the dry bones can stand on their feet, the spirit of hope calls us to worship. Come from the four winds, O breath. Breathe within us that there may be life. Seeking inspiration from these dry bone days, we lift our voices in prayer and praise into our flesh and our bones with our voices and vocations let us breathe life let us worship god congregational hymn, Spirit of Life, which is found on the insert in your program. be seated. This is what we are about. 
We plant seeds that one day will grow. Welcome to the 155th commencement of Pacific School of Religion. Please unmute yourselves and celebrate this moment with our graduating class. We are grateful to First Church for their hospitality and welcoming us back into the space that has such long history and connections to PSR. Our gratitude to Pastor Molly Basquet, who hosts us today, and the staff here at the church that have facilitated this time. Our gratitude to all who planned and prepared for this celebration. Our gratitude to our faculty, our staff, the planners of this event, the families that are here with us, and our alumni and alumnex and our board of trustees and especially our gratitude to you, our students, on whose behalf we do this work. Over the last two years, we have learned to mark with gratitude the opportunities to be physically in person with one another. We have also learned the gift of being able to connect with one another through a screen across the whole world, making accessible what was otherwise inaccessible. So welcome to those of you in the room and those of you on Zoom. Yes, that does rhyme. I worked really hard at it. Our experiences, <laughs> well, thank you, thank you. Our experiences and knowledge as an ecumenical and interfaith community as a queer community, as an immigrant community, has taught us a lot about what it means to live in the in-between. It has prepared us well to face a world that is wrestling with a hybrid moment of both its past and its future, its presence and its absence, its desires for justice and its realities of inequality. The prayer attributed to St. Oscar Romero, martyr our bishop, Archbishop of El Salvador, speaks to our shared task as a seminary. The word seminary comes from the Latin word for a seedbed. This is what we are about, Oscar Romero said. We plant the seeds that one day will grow. We water seeds already planted. We lay foundations that will need further development. We provide yeast that produces effects far beyond our capabilities. This is indeed what we are about, dear class of 2022, and those of you back with us for the classes of 21 and 20, you joined PSR from various from journeys that began across the bay or around the world. When you came to PSR, we committed to you that our education would seek to do three things, to blow your mind, to embolden your heart, and to strengthen your hands. It is my prayer that your time with us has helped to frame the passions you care so deeply about into a larger whole, that you have explored the practices that will help you draw from a deep well to sustain you in those callings and those of the communities you are called into, and that you have sharpened some of the skills that you will need to contribute to the creation of a world where all can thrive. But this is a seedbed where some growth has happened. You came from places that nurtured you and shaped you, were planted in this space, in this time, in this community, and now you return to the communities of accountability to whom you seek to serve. We are grateful for the ways we have been able to be part of your journey and to shape it. Unafraid since 1866, you are becoming part of a legacy of community shaped by the lives and work of many. I want to take a moment as we celebrate today to remember one such person, Dr. Rosemary Radford Ruther, who died today at the age of 85. 
We remember her ministry and her work. Many of you know her. Amen. Dr. Radford Ruther taught across the country, served as carpenter professor of feminist theology at PSR. She was the author of hundreds of articles and 36 books. She was considered as one of the founding mothers of feminist theology. Her impact on our community, like the impact you have had, shapes a community that continues to give to the world and that calls us to move forward with joy, with celebration, with clear eye awareness of the challenges in the world. As you go from this place to impact congregations, organizations, and communities, you join a distinguished ranks of our of VSR's alumni, of spiritually rooted change makers. With gratitude for the ways you have helped to shape our community, we celebrate your accomplishments and the work of many who have helped you to achieve them. Congratulations, PSR class of 2022. If you would please help me welcome Dr. Uriah Kim, President of the GTU. When Daniel Ishmael was speaking earlier in the ceremony, I thought Darth Vader finally came over to our side and is graduating from Pacific School of Religion. Uh, I'm going to do something new for the very first time. Uh, I will look at this tiny device uh, to read my remarks. I'm not sure whether Madonna's song from the 80s applies to what I'm doing now, but I do feel like a virgin at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> and I haven't felt like one in a long time. And uh, please uh, be gentle with me. Uh, I'm from that paper analog generation and still feel more comfortable reading the text from a paper than from a screen. My name is Uriah Kim, and I'm, I'm the ninth president of the Graduate Theological Union. I am very pleased to bring you greetings on behalf of the GTU. For nearly 60 years, the students in our member schools have been learning together, and the faculty and staff have been collaborating together to create something very special in the theological landscape. This remarkable consortium of schools, centers, and affiliates has given us a lot. The best theological library in the Western United States, arguably the most vibrant and diverse theological community in North America, and a pedagogical model of collaborative engagement and learning across differences. But the best gift of them all, the GTU has given to the world, is its students. Students who come to the GTU consortium are remarkable blue-collar theologians who are not afraid of getting their hands and feet dirty. Unlike Rapunzel, from the old fairy tale, our students refuse to stay up on the ivory tower, lowering their hair and expecting others to climb up to meet them. <laughs> Instead, our students go down to the messy village where the people and problem are. Students are in our community value passionate doing as much as rigorous thinking. Those of you graduating from Pacific School of Religion both contributed to and benefited from this extraordinary community. Graduates, on behalf of all your colleagues throughout Holy Hill, I offer you congratulations on your accomplishments and best wishes as you embark on whatever adventures await you in the future. We are very, very proud of you and grateful for what you have brought us in your time here. May you be blessed during this celebration so that you may continue to, uh, to be a blessing for others.
I am so grateful for my time and studies at Pacific School of Religion, from the welcome of the admissions office to the wise counsel from my advisor, Dr. Young, to the loving, critical challenge and instruction of the expert PSR GTU professors and TAs, to the joy, love, and compassion shown by worship and community life, to the vision and rigor offered by the PSR administrative leaders, to the insistence to always locate God in our work by the field work team, to the love, insight, and inspiration of my classmates and friends. My dry but refreshed and spiritually formed bones animated with renewed life, thank you. As PSR has been an invitation for breathing new life into me, I see myself as extending life-breathing invitations through creative practices and creative space-making for others to find new life in themselves and their communities. Through collaborative, arts-informed, social justice and community-building efforts, I seek to tend to the souls disembodied from their spirituality charged divinely ordained creativity and support the restoration of personal, interpersonal and divine creative connections. Together we will center, value and validate unheard, misrepresented and or marginalized voices in our community and make new ways for creative cooperative economics and creative community building. Where were you when the world came undone? When your world came undone? Piece by piece, disassembled, thread by thread, unraveled, shingles flying off the walls and roof of your home. Floods washing away all that was familiar and secure when the six o'clock report announced stay at home orders for the entire planet. When your faith was turned upside down as you felt the rotation of the earth slow to a near halt while community members began to die in untold numbers and friends and loved ones could no longer gather to hold one another in a collective circle of grief. Where were you when the entire world heard the desperate cries of mama and I can't breathe, uttered through a broadcast street crucifixion? Where were you as the tapestry of democracy unwove itself from the capital to the countryside, when the things that sometimes united us and the things that always divided us grew in disparate and divisive intensity? What happened when you felt your own identity splintering, spreading out, flying away to some unknown realm of being? In those moments, did you stop? Did you stand still? Did you listen as if your life, our lives, depended upon it? Did you call on or curse your God? Did you watch for signs of life in the valley of so much dying. Did you glimpse a divine shimmering of possibilities, unimagined just beyond an uncertain, unknown, and ever-shifting horizon? In the midst of the fragments of your scattered existence, could you perceive the holiness of the universal undoing? Could you perceive the holy. Where, Where were, were you, you when, when the, the world, world and you came, came wholly undone. undone? We invite you all to take three deep cleansing breaths.
Hi, my name is Samari Ford, and I am so thankful and grateful for my journey here at PSR. With my Certificate of Spirituality and Social Change, I plan on breathing life into my community, the BIPOC slash queer community, by introducing them to the many different ways that we can have relationships with God. I have been blessed to learn about Black theology, queer theology, liberation theology, feminist theology, womanist theology, and I believe that by introducing these things to my community, we can have a better foundation and a better understanding of God and how to make a real authentic relationship with him that does not depend on the words or expectations or interpretations of other people and of other people that do not have our best interests in mind. So thank you so much to PSR for this journey and I cannot wait to reinvigorate my community with this knowledge. Much better. This afternoon's scripture reading comes from the prophet Ezekiel, chapter 37, verses 1 through 10. The hand of God came upon me, and God brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. God led me all around them. There were many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. God said to me, I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then God said to me, Kekehanga o palofisai, kihengahi huini, beke pehe kia tekinau tolu, aingahi hui mo moana, mo fanongo kia folofola asihova. Koi folofola eni a a tonai sihova, kihengahi huini, go au eni, o kuo omi ma nava. So I prophesied as I had been commanded. And as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked, and there were sinews on them. And flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, Palofisai ki e matangi, io, hako itangata, keke palofisai, peke lea ki e matangi o pehe, koe folo fola eni, a a tonai si hova, ae manava, keke ha umehe matangi e fana, peke ho ki e kao mate tamate ini, ke nao mo ui.
I prophesied as God commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived. And they stood on their feet, a vast multitude. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks and praise be, be to God. To God. Marvin K. White is currently the full-time minister of celebration at the historic Glide Memorial Church in San Francisco, California. He earned his Master of Divinity degree from Pacific School of Religion in 2016, where he began his seminary journey as a member of the inaugural cohort of Changemaker Fellows. Ordained a deacon at City of Refuge, UCC. Marvin is a well sought out preacher, teacher, and facilitator who served as the inaugural public theologian in residence 2017 to 2018 at First Church of Berkeley. He is also the author of four collections of poetry published by Redbone Press titled our name be witness, status, and the two Lambda Literary Award nominated collections, Last Rites and Nothing Ugly Fly. Marvin's writing has been adapted for numerous stage productions, and he is the editor of the anthology, Nothing to Lose But Our Chains, Black Voices on Activism, Resistance and Love, published by Justice Matters Press. A prophetic poet preacher, art leader, and organizer, Marvin has been a co-facilitator of the Faith Leaders Roundtable at the Haas Institute for a Fair and Inclusive Society was a recipient of the 2017 to 2018 Yerba Buena Center for the Arts YBCA Fellowship. What does equity look like? And in 2019, he was named as one of the YBCA 100 for artists, leaders, activists, thinkers, movers, and dreamers who are using their creative and political power to enact change. Most recently, Marvin was a 2020-2021 Kennedy Center Citizen Artist Fellow. Today, as a pastor, public theologian, and community-based artist, Marvin K. White is articulating a vision of social, prophetic, and creative justice through his work as a poet, as a teacher, facilitator, activist, community organizer, preacher, homemaker, don't forget, cake baker, and Facebook statistician. <laughs> Family and friends, please welcome Marvin K. White. Good afternoon, everyone. Mostly you should know that I am just a man standing in front of you with no natural fibers on. <laughs> it's hot up in here. And that's not the name of my commencement address either. So thank you, President Vasquez-Levy, 
trustees, faculty, staff, minister, and friends and family. Thank you for this amazing opportunity to share my story, to give a field report from the valley of my dry bones. My context is Glide Memorial Church in San Francisco, where I serve a multiracial, intergenerational, multisexual, multigender, cross class, cross cultural, and cross privileged congregation, those with privilege and those who have lost privilege. I bring you greetings from Glide Memorial Church's co founders, the Right Reverend Cecil Williams, and our poetry ancestor, the dearly departed and very missed Janice Mirkatani. I'm still trying to figure this invitation out. In fact, I was still looking at the print version of the program just to make sure it was in fact me that was invited to speak. <laughs> I don't think my story is particularly interesting. At 47, I came to PSR as a part of the inaugural class of the Changemakers Fellows in 2014. I saw that I was becoming a better writer and I wanted to write outside of my comfort zone and I wanted to learn how to write about the spirituality of black women and queer black men that I come from. So I applied to the MDiv program and was admitted as a provisional student. I think provisional means until your check clears. I was open to new theologies and declared within days of my attending PSR, and ain't I a theology? To the chagrin of many of my professors. I also became an intern at Glide Memorial Church. I wanted to be an intern at a retreat center because I wanted to sit around on cushions for two years and whisper, but Glide happened. Two years, and then I began, I began the ordination process with the United Methodist Church and while at PSR, I got all A's and one B in a New Testament class. I don't see that professor here. <laughs> I experienced some racism at PSR. I went to Ferguson on an immersion trip commemorating the anniversary of the killing of Mike Brown. I got arrested there, ended up in a jail cell with Cornell West. That is a PSR story. Then I graduated from PSR and my internship ended at Glide and I was unceremoniously let go from, my, from Glide after being promised a pastoral position. I resigned from being a United Methodist member. I started preaching around for two years, preaching from pillar to post. I wasn't in exile from Glide, it was really over, the door had closed. In July of 2018, I get a call from Glide because they needed guest preachers, pulpit supplies, because the UMC had removed all the pastors from Glide. And I remember it was 2018 of July because I was just weaning myself off of Prozac after the deepest bout of depression that I had ever experienced. I told my psychiatrist that every day I woke up, I had to start from zero, not clean slate zero, but wiped clean zero. Nothing nada, nunca, nilch, nothing good and nothing God from yesterday even carried over until the next day, dry bones. So yeah, right before I got there, the new senior pastor had resigned at Glide. Then the UMC tried to instate its own new leadership. It ultimately removed itself from Glide Memorial Church. The UMC removes pastors in front of the congregation on a Sunday during celebration. The UMC and Glide enter into lawsuits. There are bodies strewn all about the church. There are members who left and there are members who stayed. That's when I was called in. Pulpit supply. One time, one Sunday, I was invited. Then two Sundays. Then three Sundays. Then I became a regular preacher. Then the interim minister of celebration. Then you know there was no God at Glide. Wasn't no Jesus at Glide. Just a bunch of Wiccans and atheists and Druids who were bloodletting in the chancel. <laughs> Those were the rumors. Then the UMC and Glide went into a lawsuit and ultimately reached a settlement. It's all on our website. <laughs> then Trump, George Floyd, the pandemic, then the leaving of the physical church, 
and getting as many people as possible onto the spaceship and out onto the space station because Earth was about to blow up in a pandemic, then almost three years in space, then Janice dies, then the, then the Glide Foundation and the church begin separating, then variants, then I realize that I'm the only clergy at the church and I don't know what I'm doing and I can't quote a dead white theologian to save my life and I can't remember what class on dirty denominational breakups, pandemics, racialized violence, epigenetic of trauma, I can't remember what I learned in that class. And now the Glide Foundation is a public benefits corporation and the church is now its own 501c3 religious organization. And Cecil would never say Jesus as many times as you do. And Cecil would always say Jesus. Why don't you say Jesus? Oh, wait. Then I had to call our church's first ever board of directors. And we're hiring an operations director, communication specialist, a church annual giving and community engagement manager, and an associate pastor. Hit me up if you're looking for work. <laughs> and along with a consultant on the board, we actually are writing Glide's independent mission, vision, and value statement, as well as our first independent theological statement of faith as well as our own governance structure. And so they say I'm a word dazzler and, you're, and I have to explain to my board of believers and non-believers, I'm like, it's like, the council, it's like the council at Nicaea or Hamilton the musical, depending on how you look at it. And I still can't remember what class I learned all this in, which brings me to today with you here to let you know that everything you thought was dead in you, everything and everybody who left you for dead, every valley or tomb you called your way out of, every death that you endured, what brings me here is to tell you to keep living. God is going to use all of it for God's glory. What brings me here is looking onto Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our Sunday worship experiences are called celebrations. I am the full-time minister of celebration at Glide Memorial Church when I finished my ordination process with the UCC, where I am the longest standing member in discernment ever. <laughs> I will be senior pastor at Glide Memorial Church. No different than your story. Let's pray. God who is process, God who is still becoming, God who is still healing, God who is beauty, God who is still in recovery. Help us to create today a path of rewiring our belief system, unconditionally loving ourselves when we have grown accustomed to the death darkness of the valley. Help us to remember that we can raise each other up. We can raise each other from what has deadened us. We can come back to life, come back to right relation, come back to the right relations, come back to forgiveness, come back to restoration, come back to love. Let the church say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Shalom, salam, namaste, and ashe. Now, you know the story. Ezekiel 37, 1 through 10, the people of Israel, the people of the Tenderloin, the dwindling black populations in Oakland and San Francisco. You know the story. Queer folks, women, the elders, and the differently able. You know the story. Poor folks, people in recovery, food and housing insecure people. You know the story. Student loan buried people, no living wage earning people, three job having people. You know the story. The people of Israel felt hopeless and abandoned by God. You know the story. The people of Israel, the people of the Tenderloin, the dwindling black populations, queer folks, women, the elders, the differently abled, poor folk, people in recovery, food and housing, insecure, student loan buried, people non-living wage earning, people three job having people were in fact abandoned by God. They weren't just feeling it. I'm, I'm realizing that this is probably a mental health awareness month sermon. You know the story. God keeps track of who 
and what you're doing all the time and then criticizes you for doing little things. God constantly accuses you of being unfaithful. God prevents or discourages you from seeing your friends or your family going to work or going to school. God controls all the money you spend. God humiliates, hum, humiliates you in front of others. God destroys your property or things that you care about. God threatens to hurt you or your children or your pets or does cause harm by hitting, punching, slapping, kicking, or biting you. God uses or threatens to use a weapon against you. God forces you to have sex against your will. God blames you for his or her violent outbursts. You know the story. They weren't just feeling abandoned. They were abandoned by God. And the soldiers who lay in the valley's unmarked grave were abandoned. The bones, see, are the bigger story, are the bigger person in this story. The bones too dry for soup or broth still forgave, still decided to no longer play dead but to come back to life. Killed in battle, brought back to life, they will die again one day and hope to be resurrected again one day. There's a pattern there that has to be broken, and God hates apologizing. So God told Ezekiel, his homeboy, his proxy, to prophesy life and breathe to the bones, symbolizing how he would revive and reestablish the people of Israel in their land. To this day, I hate to disappoint. And I know I also like to disappoint. It's twisted. I often see my failures as primarily letting myself down. I often feel myself falling short of the mark in my Christianity, and it's also my disappointment to God. And I don't ever want to hear God say that God was sorry that God created me. So I live out my Christian faith waiting for the other shoe to drop. Jesus Christ, God, you could have just said, I'm sorry, and taught me how to say I'm sorry. And God always talking about these covenants. I'm establishing one with you that we shall never again. This is a sign of a covenant, covenant, and it shall be a sign between me and the earth, and I will remember my covenant with you and every living creature. And when the bow is in the clouds, another covenant, then this is a sign of the covenant between. See, when you say covenant that many times, it just loses its meaning. Fine. I got a valley of bones to pick with you, God. Even though I'm bone tired, I'm going to come back and keep coming back and challenge you to live into this covenantal relationship, God. I know what you did, God. The flood, the pestilence, the dry spells, the killing, the curses, the cursing, the things you said. Fine, if we are in a covenantal relationship, God, then how are you really doing? Are you working your program, God? What step are you on? You know, if you have three days of recovery, God, you can help somebody with one day of recovery. Because what I can't do, God, is walk around creation and Christianity worried if you have fallen off the wagon. I can't live out my waiting for the other shoe to drop. I can't live fully wondering if you will be triggered again. Leave me to waste to skin and bone. I just assumed you were okay, God. I assumed that you had gotten that temper under control. I thought you had started taking online anger management classes, did some biofeedback, learned to meditate. But who's your sponsor? What's your Myers-Briggs? So please don't show up to commencement drunk, God. How are you really doing today? But here's the thing, maybe we ought to feel sorry for God because God doesn't have a mother, and God does not have a godmother. God ain't never had a big mama hug God in her bosom so tight till God thought that God would choke on her jean nate. <laughs> God ain't never had nobody to look up to. God ain't never had a woman say, no, you gotta go through me to get to God. God is still a kid at heart, and kids can't be God, and we, got, we can't live into our faith until we address the fact that we are adult survivors of a violent God. But what if we extend grace to God and the potential of God's evolving and growing and changing and knowing and leaning into the God self? We have an opportunity to practice real Christianity, real love, real forgiveness in the most unimaginable ways, not to forget what God has done, but to remember how quickly off course can happen, how unattended and new trauma can be triggered. God didn't even have a Bible. 
we must be reminded to find ways to reorient ourselves and know that rifts and strifes are actually not of love and not of God. Reconciliation and restitution and renewal and restoration, and restoration is the only thing that God should be capable of doing. God was not God's self. We know that now. There was, there was a reason, and it had nothing to do and everything to do with us. We know what God set in motion, the only way God knew how, a covenant, a mutuality, a beloved community, a village. We can't keep doing this, God. I get bone dry, and then you keep wanting to bring me back. There's a lot of work to do to trust God again, but you can't cut us to the bone anymore, God. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. We been knew that. We need for you to know that, God. And this is how we know that this moment might be different that God might be finally hearing this bag of bones. If I can go a little bit further, Pastor Ann, into verse 14, God says, I will put my spirit in you and you shall live. I will place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and performed it, says the Lord. With that spirit, God took the ninth step, made direct amends to the people that he hurt, gave a part of himself that says, I'm not going anywhere this time. So now in our valleys, in our abandonment, in our continuing to do what deadens us, can we trust God with our life if he trusts us with his breath and his spirit? Can these bones live, recover, or be revived? Can we administer Narcan to these overdosed bones? Can we allow the bones to live? Can the bones flourish? Can the bones be restored? As we leave here today, can we promise to lift up and share our stories, prayers, and songs of radical resurrection and unconditional love that brings us all back to life? Can we believe our people when they say, I'm no longer dead, or in African-American vernacular English, I ain't dead no more. We have to believe them when they say, I choose life. Can we unconditionally on this commencement Sunday, trusting in everyone's, no matter who they are, resurrection and restorative justice possibility? When our congregations, clients, and communities say, I am no longer ashamed, I am no longer angry, I am no longer self-medicating, I am no longer believing that I don't have anything good to contribute to the world, I am no longer living someone else's truth instead of my own. When they get their bony asses up and say, I ain't dead no more, can we believe them? When the world wants to remind them, but didn't I see you doing that very dead thing yesterday? Weren't you just self-doubting, self-destructive, self-feeding, self-loathing, and self-pitying just last week? And the last time I checked, wasn't all your self-esteem gone? Can we still believe one another? No bones about it. Can we still believe in one another's resurrection possibility? Whenever someone in my family has overcome something that seemed otherwise insurmountable, was cured of something that had death as the prognosis, or survived something that no one has ever walked away from, my people say, somebody must have been praying for you. You living today is flesh to the ancestors' bones. I believe that we today are the recipients, the progeny, the beneficiaries and heirs to a promise, a prayer, a wish, a notion, a freedom map that our ancestors, seven generations back, sent ahead for us today, to use today, to enjoy today, and to open today. Your loving today is flesh to the ancestors' bones. Our lives, our possibilities of living into the fullness of creation should not be an unopened, cellophane, and dust-covered gift basket. We are the answer to every prayer sent ahead into the then unknown coming lineages of our blood and claimed ancestors. They knew somehow that we would live into the dream that they had to defer. Your healing today is flesh to the ancestors' bones. I'm inviting you today to imagine yourself being the recipient of so many carefully placed natural, intellectual, spiritual, psychic, and psychological gifts. I'm inviting you to imagine yourself the sole beneficiary of systems, political, critical, analytical, scientific, and artistic that were sent ahead as tools for you to get yourself out that grave. Your recovery today is flesh to the ancestors' bones. And when they did not send tools, when you feel toolless, Know that despite the rumors of ruin and oppression and being oppressed, they said seven generations black, I believe that one of us, one of y'all, 
will win. I believe that we will win. Your graduating today is flesh to the ancestors' bones. You are that winning hand, beloved. You crossed the finish line in record time. This is as far as your family has ever gotten. How did you get here if not for the generations of training and conditioning that, would it, take, that it would take to produce finally in your royal line, you a prophet? Your decision to speak truth to God's power is flesh to the ancestor's bone. I want you to know without a doubt today that there is and has always been an answer waiting for you, a way out waiting for you, a comfort waiting for you, a windfall waiting for you, a justice waiting for you, and oh my people, there is life waiting for you. I want you to know that I know that the tears you cry are not just yours, but for your people tired of being beaten in the same place, in the same way for generations. Restorative justice to dry bones mean that you get to get it all back. You in the best shape you are in is as far as your family has ever gotten. You, it has all come down to you, all of it. You are the spell, you are the incant, you are the meditation, you are the conjure, you are the mindfulness, you are the root, you are the prayer, you are the answer that you have been waiting for. I just want the church to say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right on. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Salam. Salam. Namaste. Namaste. And Ashe. Thank you so much.
uh, now the honor of Dr. Sharon Jacob and I to pray a prayer of departures and blessings over these wonderful, miraculous, and an answer to prayer of the ancestors graduates. 2022. This prayer is adapted from the words of Reverend Ann Jefferson. And in the Pentecostal tradition I am from, uh, we practice on the laying of hands for our graduates. And so I want to invite you now, if you're willing and able, just to extend a hand symbolically towards our graduates here, whether you're in the room or you're on Zoom, as we pray together. Let us pray. O God of departures, Holy One of Exodus, the God of dry bones, the God of resurrection promises, and the spirit guardian of all roads and routes. These graduates are about to depart on a new adventure in life, and their bags are packed with both dread and delight. The old is known, comfortable, safe, and secure. The unknown is threatening and danger-filled. O God of travelers and holy emigrants, help these graduates, guide them, cover them, shield them, anoint them, and create a way where there seems to be no way. As they are filled with anticipation and appreciation, what else should they pack? Comfortable clothing to change into, nothing starched, and a change of shoes. Shoes that are comfortable for exploring with ease the strange, the unknown, and the wild lands that lay ahead. Yes, and also my dancing shoes, so that with delight they will celebrate the wedding feasts they come upon. Yes, a sturdy oak staff of love upon which to lean. The older the oak, the stronger the staff. One dream vision as our map, the compass of prayer when fog hides the stars or eclipses the sun. One medicine kit with patience tablets for delays, dried memories for snacks along the way, and bandages for a sprained spirit after a fall. God of departures and homecomings, may they go forth with the adventure, hungry heart of an explorer, the faith of one homeward bound to you and with you, beloved companion, as their navigator and guide. We give you thanks, our source and sustenance, for this day of fulfillment and blessings. May they go forth in peace and mercy, and their days be filled with wonder and delight. Amen. Amen. Senior Class Gift 2022. As an act of gratitude for our time at PSR, each graduating class decides upon a class gift to leave as a legacy and expression of hope for the future and for the students of the future. In our earlier meetings with this year's graduates, several suggestions were offered for the 2022 senior gift. Many of the proposals were connected to nurturing, nurturing the community through food, planting a community garden, 
supporting a local food bank, and other ideas that would suggest a focus on the ever-increasing need for food justice and sustainability, and the global push to provide marginalized communities with healthier food options. Ultimately, the class of 2022 settled on dedicating this year's Senior Gift Fund to the Berkeley Food Pantry. A number of our students took advantage of this resource, especially during the pandemic, and the establishment of a PSR community garden project with the goal of raising at least $1,500. We believe this gift actively fulfills that part of the commencement theme, coming undone, coming together, breathing life in dry bones days, and all are invited to contribute to this worthy cause beyond this day of commencement. We, the graduating class, thank PSR, and we thank you in advance for partnering with us in this endeavor. My name is Mary Kate Beck. I am going to breathe life into dry bones. I will follow the example laid before me by Dr. Joyce Del Rosario and step into my pastoral authority and power. I am finding and using my voice for others, especially those on the margins. Through deep, active listening and using a hermeneutic of suspicion, I will channel my inner Dr. Sharon Jacob and look with a lens that asks the hard questions. I will center voices of BIPOC, women, immigrants, the LGBTQ community, young people, and the silence. I will work tirelessly and take up space as a woman working in the Catholic Church, knowing that brave women like Dr. Susan Abraham have gone before me. Finally, I will channel the same energy and sacredness that was demonstrated to me by my midwife at my daughter's birth. Anne told me to push, rest, wait, push. She cared for my body. She reminded me of the cloud of witness surrounding me, especially Doris and Janet. She wiped my brow. She gave me ice chips. Like Anne, I will breathe life into dry bones and model my ministry like a midwife. Together, I will walk with my community as we bring new life into the world. Thank you, PSR, for all you've given me. I am grateful. I am grateful. Good afternoon. Each year, Pacific School of Religion honors students' excellence in building community, preaching, and ethics. These awards were presented at the Graduates Chapel on May 10th, 2022. The first was the Konania Community Building Awards, which went to Madeline Evelina 
Gagosian, Rize Don Jones, William John Martin III, and Latu Lasinga Puloka Payeya. With the Koinonia Award, the Pacific School of Religion Alumnix Association honors those graduating students who have strengthened PSR through outstanding contributions of spirit, insight, and intellect during their time at the school. The Greek word koinonia, which appears frequently in the New Testament, is variously translated as community, fellowship, and sharing. Let's give a big round of applause for our winners. Our next prize is the Michael M. 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 Mendiola Prize in Ethics, which went to Shannon Kitchens. The Michael M. M. Mendiola Prize in Ethics is awarded to the graduating student who has submitted an outstanding essay or thesis on the questions of theodicy and human suffering or other important topics in contemporary ethics. The award is named for a much beloved former PSR ethics professor who served on the faculty from 1992 to 2009. Dr. Mendiola not only helped to birth the Center for LGBTQ and Gender Studies and Religion, clap, <laughs> but also made major contributions to the study of bio biomedical issues. This award, award was established at the time of his untimely death by faculty colleagues and friends in honor of his many contributions to the life of this institution. Okay, award number three. The Frida Smith Feminist Preaching Award. Melelupe Moa and Tupo Vericoso Tau Ta Tufua. <laughs> Honoring Reverend Elder Frida Smith, the first woman ordained in metropolitan community churches who is known for her groundbreaking feminist preaching, this prize is awarded for a prophetic innovative and transformational feminist sermon. Feminist is understood as meaning advocating for the full humanity and well-being of women, including transgender women. Right. Yeah. Give it up. This award is open to people of all genders and gender identities. Our fourth award, the Paul Wesley Yinger Preaching Awards, goes to Kimberly Diane Williams. The Paul Wesley Yinger Preaching Award is presented each spring to the graduating Master of Divinity students, judged to be the most outstanding preachers with demonstrated dramatic skills. The recipients are selected each year by a committee chaired by the professor of homiletics, other faculty who teach courses in homiletics at PSR, and the dean of the faculty. The endowed award was established by the family and friends of Dr. Yinger, a noted United Church of Christ preacher who served as a trustee at Pacific School of Religion from 1962 until 1985. Let's give a big round of applause for all of our award winners. Will the candidates for the Certificate of Theological Education for Leadership please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, because these students have completed a designated one-year online program of theological explore exploration and study, I am authorized to present them as candidates for the Certificate of Theological Education for leadership. 
I confer, I confer upon each of you the Certificate of Theological Education for Leadership with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a certificate. Lee Arne, on Zoom. Linda Kaauai Iwamoto. <laughs> Roxanne W. Whitelight. Caroline Kaowiwai Choi in Peters Belsom in absentia. Jack Edward Belsom in absentia. Rob Kojima in absentia. Tiffany Kemapu Nae Kaye Lao Kama Marote in absentia. Will the candidates for the Certificate of Sexuality and Religion please rise? Mr. President, because these students have completed a designated course of study with specialized training in sexuality, sexual orientation, gender identity, and religion, I present them as candidates for the Certificate of Sexuality and Religion. In their cases and others to follow, it is understood that I am authorized by a vote of the faculty and the Board of Trustees to present them as candidates for their respective degrees, and that graduation is contingent upon completion of all academic requirements at the end of this academic year. In the name and under the authority of the faculty and trustees of Pacific School of Religion, I confer upon you the Certificate of Sexuality and Religion with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a certificate. B. David Beers, in absentia. Sarah Elizabeth Geddes, class of 2021. Susan Salverson, class of 2021. <laughs> Will the candidates for the Certificate of Spirituality and Social Change please rise? Mr. President, because these students have completed a one-year immersive course of study integrating theological reflection and spiritual formation with leadership for social change, I present them as candidates for the Certificate of Spirituality and Social Change. I confer upon you the Certificate of Spirituality and Social Change with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a certificate. Mary Kate Becker on Zoom. <laughs> Sarai Ford on Zoom. Madeline Evelina Gagesian, in person.
Carla Elaine Halliard, class of 2021. Rize Dawn Jones on Zoom. Melelupe Moa, in person. I'm just saying, I say her name at least two more times, so. <laughs> Latu Lasinga Puloka Paella. Tupo Vaikoso Taufatufua. Kimberly Diane Williams. Will the candidates for the degree of Masters of Arts in Social Transformation please rise? <laughs> Mr. President, because these students have completed a prescribed two-year course of theological study that equips students to think critically about social, political dynamics and reflect constructively on the role played by religion and theological traditions in movements for social change, I present them as candidates for the degree of Masters of Arts in Social Transformation. I confer upon you the degree of Master of Arts in Social Transformation with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto in witness thereof. I give you a, a diploma and cause you to be invested with a hood for this degree. Mary Kate Becker on Zoom. <laughs> Madeline Evelina Gagesian. <laughs> Joni Sue Huntsberger. Thank you. Rize Dawn Jones on Zoom. Melelupe Moa. <laughs> Latu Lasinga Puloka Paella.
Tupo by Koso Tau Fatofua. Kimberly Diane Williams. Will the candidates for the degree of Master of Theological Studies please rise? Mr. President, because these students have completed a prescribed two-year course of theological study, I present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Theological Studies. I confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Theological Studies with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a diploma and cause you to be invested with a hood for this degree. Laney Brandt. Joni Sue Huntsberger. <laughs> William John Martin the Third. Catherine Rotner, in absentia. <laughs> Stephen Van Eaton, in person. <laughs> Candidates for the degree of Masters of Divinity, please rise. <laughs> Mr. President, because these students have completed a prescribed three-year course of theological study, I present them as candidates for the degree of Master of Divinity. I confer upon each of you the degree of Master of Divinity with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a diploma and cause you to be invested with a hood for this degree. Mary Kate Becker on Zoom. Josefina Gaibuya, class of 2020. Sarah Elizabeth Geddes, class of 2021.
Madeline Evelina Gagesian. Carla Elaine Halyard, class of 2021. <laughs> Shannon Kitchens. Lupe Moa. Latu Lasinga Puloka Payea. Susan L. Salverson, class of 2021. Tupo Vaikoso Taufa Tofua. Kimberly Diane Williams. Will the candidates for the degree of Doctor of Ministry please rise? 
Mr. President, because these students have completed a prescribed course of graduate professional study that integrates research on praxis with theoretical analysis and theological reflection for the good of communities of faith, with the presentation of a thesis, I present them as candidates for the degree of Doctor of Ministry. I confer upon each of you the degree of Doctor of Ministry with all the rights and privileges appertaining thereto. In witness thereof, I give you a diploma and cause you to be invested with a hood for this degree. David Brown, in absentia. <laughs> Darnell L. Ishmael, with distinction. Lauren Jones Mayfield, with distinction. Evelyn Irene V. Hill, on Zoom. How about a big round of applause for all of our graduates? What an honor it is to be able to offer a charge to you who have offered so many charges to me. You have helped me know what it is to be a person doing work for God in the world, and for that I am grateful. And now it is my honor to offer these words to you. When Ezekiel looked out on the valley of dry bones, when Ezekiel saw blood pooled in the top supermarket aisles and a white boy groomed for violence stewing in his hate, he heard the spirit asking, can these bones live? When Ezekiel witnessed laws banning books and histories and truths to protect the privileged from discomfort, he heard the descendants asking, can these bones live? When his eyes scanned the landscape of hate, wanting to steal dignity and care from trans youth and adults, he heard love asking, can these bones live? When Ezekiel glimpsed the met millions of chairs left empty by COVID-19, he heard the ancestors asking, can these bones live? When Ezekiel looked out on the valley of dry bones, he also saw sinews and flesh and skin. He remembered that wholeness belongs to the disjointed. He imagined that wind would become breath, would become life, would become dancing, would become laughter and wailing and tears and shouts, would become protests, would become mutual aid, would become abolition, would become beloved community, would become kingdom come. When Ezekiel looked out on the valley of dry bones, he woke to the dream of what they were becoming. 
When I look out at you, dear graduates, I honor that you are already this not yet. You know what it is to be given bones and see flesh. You have wrestled meaning and insight from the sacred scriptures of empire, even if it meant reading against the text and reading more voices into the canon. You have carved out space for your voice in academic structures that were never meant to hold the particular cadence of your wisdom. You have found a deep community, genuine connection, and fierce comrades in the faces and boxes on your computer screens. You have unfolded vocations from a dying planet, from a grieving world, from societies and systems and structures that are always breaking our hearts and wounding our bodies. You have seen the oceans rising and learned to breathe underwater. When you looked out at the valley of dry bones, you woke to the dream of what they were becoming. Now you will learn to hold on to that vision and see it everywhere. If the patterns of life you learned in seminary formed you for exhaustion, for the exhaustion capitalism requires, for forgetting foods and meds and family and rest so that the days feel like dry bones, remember, you are still flesh and the wind can become breath and we will know what it means to rise. If you go out into ministry and discover that their mission statement, their open and affirming covenant, their Black Lives Matter banner, their sanctuary declaration, their AAPI Heritage Month ends up being dry bones because you are too prophetic, too political, too trans, too non-binary, too poor, too disabled, too much like Malcolm and not enough like Martin. Remember, you are still flesh, and the wind can again become breath, and we will know what it means to rise. If the institu institutions that were supposed to be for you and by you turn out to be unable or unwilling to unhinge themselves from the dry bones of heteropatriarchy and white supremacy and colonialism so they can't value or hear your voice without running you into the ground, remember, you are still flesh. And the wind can again become breath, and we will know what it is to rise. When Ezekiel looked out on the valley of dry bones, he also saw sinews and flesh and skin. He remembered that wholeness belongs to the disjointed, this, beloveds, is your charge. Look on the valleys with Ezekiel eyes. Recognize the dry bones and remember them singing. Pay attention to the skeletons and see the way that breath is always returning. Hold space for the hauntings and trust that seeds are taking root See the brittleness for what it is and wake to the dream of what it is becoming. For you are the already in the not yet, and these bones can live. May it be so. Greetings, everyone, on this very, very special day at PSR. It is my honor and privilege to be with you in this moment of celebration of your accomplishments. Greetings, everyone, on this very, very special day at PSR. It is my honor and privilege to be with you in this moment of celebration of your accomplishments. My name is Loie Powell 
And I'm an alum of PSR from 1977, a long time ago, yes, I know, uh, long before many of you were born. But I can also assure you that the education that we received was as life-changing and transformative as the education that you have received. It is an honor to be with you also as the president of the Alumnix Council. And on behalf of the council, I offer you our congratulations, our blessings, and all of our hopes for you as you move forward into your callings, into the next stages of your lives and ministries. So may all go well and know that we are there to support you. Well, we're there to support you also in, because you now are part of the Alumnix Association of PSR, a vast network of those of us who have received degrees from PSR and who have been engaged in all kinds of ministries and in all kinds of settings. It is an incredible network of mentoring, of support, of advice giving, because sometimes you don't know exactly where your ministry and your career path is going to take you. You might head down one path thinking that's where I'm called and end up far over there. Surprise maybe, but called. And there are many of us who have had similar experiences. There are alums who have been in top leadership in our denominations and alums who have served in two and three point callings out in rural areas. There are alums who have started their own nonprofit organizations, who have been chaplains in prisons and in hospitals in all kinds of settings. There are pastors, there are professors of religion. Um, so we are a wonderful, wonderful network for each other. Uh, we also hope that we can be helpful resources to current students as P at PSR as well and be of whatever support that we can be as they discern where they are called as well. So the Alumnix Association is a wonderful group of people. We hope you will stay connected with us. We have a faith Facebook page, so please go there and sign on to that. Um, there is an Alumnix newsletter that comes out, uh, shares good information uh, about what alums are doing and what the school is doing as well. We hope that you will encourage prospective students to consider PSR and to come and be part of this wonderful group of alums eventually and to receive the kind of education and support that you have been receiving as well. It's also important that you keep your information updated with the development office so that we can keep in touch with you through the association and um, you can know where we are. So as you move forward from this day, uh, all good uh, blessings and energy and may the spirit be with you and that you bring to this world, this world that is in such a need of healing and hope and compassion, uh, the gifts that you have, and that together we will continue to be unafraid and create that kind of beloved community to which we are called. So congratulations and may all be well. Let's start with a little fun. Congratulations, 2022 graduates and your loved ones. My name is Debbie Alvarez Rodriguez, and I am the vice chair of the PSR Board of Trustees and a proud 2018 graduate of PSR. On behalf of my colleagues on the board, I want to welcome the class of 2022 into PSR's alumnus circle. 
The world needs your gifts and passion, and it's truly a blessing to be part of your life's journey. And we encourage you and invite you to stay connected to this beloved community as we shape future generations of leaders. With the close of this academic year, we bid farewell to Dr. Isaiah Young, Dr. Sharon Jacobs, and Dr. Sharon Finham. We are so grateful for your years of service to PSR and to our students, and we wish you many blessings in all of your future endeavors. We also, we also note with sadness the passing of several significant members of our extended community whose names are acknowledged in our program. Let's take a minute for remembrance. We are grateful for a remarkable faculty that has led the way in theological education while responding to the demands of this moment. We celebrate Reverend Dr. Thomas Hermans Webster's completion of his PhD. He is unable to be with us today because he is attending his graduation at Boston University. So shout out to him. We celebrate the research and renewal of sabbaticals that have been granted for Dean Susan Abraham this spring, Dr. Aaron Brody in the fall, and Dr. Bernard Schlager beginning next spring. Congratulations on that much needed time. We are also thankful for Bishop Warner Brown and student trustee William Martin, who completed their term of service to the board, including serving as a chair. Congratulations. We are especially delighted to welcome four new members of the Board of Trustees. Stan Barkey, Demetrius Burnett, who's class of 2016, student trustee Shannon Mark X, and Patrick Reyes. We want to thank them and welcome them to the board. I also want to thank our entire administrative leadership team, faculty, and staff for your dedication and commitment to PSR's mission. And mostly, and most importantly, a special gratitude to you, our amazing students, for your presence and your, the unique way you bring this community together and in a stronger way. As we emerge from this pandemic, we are called to stand up. There are churches and communities to reimagine. There are lives to restore. The fight for justice and equality must continue. PSR's legacy was formed in the, defining, in the defining moments, in defining moments, and now it is your turn. It's time to reinvent the story of grace and inclusion for a new world, for a new day, unafraid. This ends our 155th commencement exercises. Congratulations. And we, will re re and we will reconvene for the new academic year on September 6, 2022. So don't forget. Congratulations. We're almost done. Yes. What I would love to do is to invite each of you to rise as you're willing and able as we read together a closing blessing before we have our benediction from our preacher today. And I invite you to take another deep breath. Together. This is the blessing we cannot speak by ourselves. This is the blessing that comes when we leave behind our aloneness, when we gather together, when we turn toward one another, when we finally listen into the chaos, when we breathe together at last. As a benediction, 
I pray love and light in every direction. I pray illumination and lesson and ownership of your brilliance. I pray illness and heartbreak and fear and disappointment remain the stuff of dreams and not your reality. I pray you know that scared, alone, and isolated are not the lands that you inherited. I pray you know that which grew you also made provision for you. I pray you know the difference between what you hunger for and what you crave. I pray that you know things break all the time, heart, bones, but also cycles. I pray your freedom and peace and self-forgiveness and a healthy replenishment of anything that you feel you are emptied of. I pray you know that it's not happening to you, but it's all happening for you. I pray you know that help is the first thing you ask for and not the last. I pray you know that your ancestors, your woman folk, your men folk, your queer folk, and your kin folk, here and gone, expect you to expand our territory. I pray that you know all transitions are hard, but every one of your aunts and uncles have proof that what's on the other side of challenge and change, growth spurts, identity crisis, rebellion, self-reflection, consequence is joy, is wholeness, and is purpose. I pray you all promise to continue to make choices that say yes, you are in agreement with the divine call left on and put on your ministries. I pray you know that your life is flesh to the ancestors' bones. Go in peace.